Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. We've got a very special unboxing day today. I've bought a complete set of guitars that I've wanted to own a complete set of for quite some time, because it was like three or four years ago, there was a complete set of these for sale on eBay, and I came close to buying it, but we just couldn't quite agree on price. So this set right here was actually listed about a year ago on Reverb, and I had made them an offer, and we just couldn't quite agree on a price. But it sat there for a whole year and you know at the end of the year I like to buy some nice stuff for myself as a treat for working so hard and I think over the course of the year I actually made him a few different offers just going up slightly each and every time because it's like well I do want them but I just we just couldn't quite get to the price but this December we finally agreed on a price for the whole set and it's a set of six guitars that we'll be unboxing today but what is that series well it comes from the very early 90s it's the limited edition colors set. So this was a limited run of guitars in custom finishes that they were doing. There were four different standards and two customs. We've actually documented a few of these on the show, like the white custom. I think I've done the red one, maybe not. I believe I have had the blue one, but it's been a long time since we've had them. The theme of these six guitars are translucent see-through finishes, meaning you can see the wood grain underneath the cool colors. So the story with these is his son was selling these on Reaver for his father, and he was an old retired dealer. So he held not one, but two sets of these back. And they were supposed to be 100% complete mint condition. Ah, uh, this first one I'm already kind of getting let down here. I see it's been displayed on a stand. It was my understanding that these were kept in their case the entire time. So we've got some stand rash on this one. Pretty badly, I would say, on both sides. I mean, that really melted the lacquer. That's a darn shame. We've got some chipping by this bottom strap pin. That was definitely not disclosed, so... Uh. I mean, at least they display well from the front. The gold has not been too heavily tarnished or anything. That is a beautiful example. So this one is called Trans Blue for obvious reasons. You can see through to the wood grain and it's a blue Les Paul standard, two piece top. You're just gonna have the regular 490 series pickups in here. And these frets are definitely going to need some polishing, but I'm curious if these still have case candy and that they do. So obviously since these are technically new old stock, the warranty card was never filled out. You get the limited five year warranty price tag on here. That's always cool to see on these early 90s Gibsons. And then you get an owner's manual. You didn't really have COAs or anything like that in this particular year. So that is our first one here, looking pretty nice. So now let's go ahead and open up number two. Is it a standard? Is it a custom? I don't know. But to continue on the story of the limited colors edition is they supposedly made around 200 of each color and some of them were indeed shipped overseas. So if I remember the lore correctly, it was 150 sets for the US and 50 sets outside of the US. But let's go ahead and see what is in case number two here. Definitely dusty cases wherever they were stored it was not like, you know, a highly warshipped area or anything. But inside this pink blanket looks like another one of the Les Paul standards. This is one of those colors I've been wanting to see in person for a long time. It's supposed to be trans purple, but it's so bright. It's more so a pink hue in my opinion. I've always called this the Barney Les Paul standard. It's kind of cool in person. It does have a little bit of a deeper purple hue when you get it at an angle, but most viewing positions, yeah, it's kind of a pink guitar, but then you look at the back and it's kind of got that same thing going on. So it's nice to get a fancy color Les Paul and be able to see that wood grain. That's what the limited colors edition is all about. And you'll notice this is actually spelled more so European style, C-O-L-O-U-R-S instead of American style. That's just how these are. This one also has that stand rash. That's a darn shame. Then again, most people who get these, they'll display them, so it's not that big of a deal. But this one, unfortunately, does not get any case candy. And now on to the clickbait of the video. I don't want to talk bad about the seller, but this is not a smart way to ship guitars, especially new old stock, really rare, valuable guitars as a set. So what we've got here is three guitars packed together, shipped by UPS. The box is not looking so hot. Whenever you have a really heavy package that's 
strange to, for someone to pick up. You're just asking for troubles. I actually had these delivered around New Year's, I do believe, and it's taken me a good couple of weeks just to get up the courage to even open this because I am scared, especially knowing that the customs are in here now because those are the really hard ones to find nowadays in any sort of decent condition that's not all beat up. So let's hope and pray that Santa allowed these to arrive safely. Here's the one, here's the two, and last but not least, a number three. Despite the unusual pack job, I really like this wrapping paper. In fact, I think I know what thumbnail emoji I'm going to use on this one. <laughs> Let's go ahead and uh, set these to the side, open that one first. Thankfully, so far, I'm not hearing any flopping headstocks in any of these cases, but that doesn't mean there's not a big crack down the side, because whenever you have a box like that, it's real easy for somebody to accidentally drop it, or they throw it onto their conveyor belts out of the trucks. I'm just hoping and praying, because if just one of these gets broken, the set is broken, you know? So inside here, wow. Okay, so as far as me being a picky collector goes, I would much rather piece together my own set, but to have a complete set, you know, from the factory, from the same dealer, that's great. But I'm a stickler for really cool wood grain, and this has to be the absolute best one of the entire collection as far as that goes. I mean, it's a really cool ambered over color. I think that's what they call this one, trans amber. But it's like a translucent orange. And you've got all that beautiful wood grain. Unfortunately, I can feel it already. Yeah, that's why you don't do that. And this is why you take strap buttons off. So now I have a sunken strap button into this guitar. Is it a huge deal? No, you, you can fill it in. It just really stinks that it has to be the one that I was the most excited for. This even has a little bit of flame figuring to it. I mean, nothing crazy, but it's nice. But let's see, how's our headstock here? Doesn't look like any breaks, but we definitely have some stand rash on there. Not as bad as the other ones. Kind of got an interesting mineral streak line right there. So outside of a sunken strap button, we're okay there. Looks like we've got some additional case candy. So I uh, might have to talk to the seller about that. I mean, jeez. Yeah, you can see it on the case. So that got dinged really hard right there, where it impressed the case so much, even though there's a space right here, it just sank that in there. So yeah, that thing got dropped. Honestly, we're kind of lucky that it just sank the strap button and didn't crack the body because sometimes Dunlop strap locks can do that because they're like a giant chisel. So that's why if you're shipping something that truly cannot be replaced, it is a good idea to remove at least your bottom strap button. It's not mandatory, but at least have some additional padding at the end of the case. But now on to the best ones of the set, the customs. Actually, come to think of it, I think I'm missing a box here because it's a complete set of six. I only have five guitars here. I'll have to go find where that is. But let's get this one open. Maybe it's the other standard. Who knows? Yes, yes, it is. It's one of the ugliest colors of the series. But let's see how it appears in person. Whew. It's kind of like a swamp gray. I mean, I don't know if I like that or not. It's interesting. So... It's kind of like that other one. It's got some good wood grain, but it's like a greenish gray color. I like it a little better in person, but still I would say my first opinions on this one were accurate. Probably the ugliest one of the series, but hey, you have to have a complete set of these guys. So this thing, the frets are in a little bit better shape than the other ones. Interestingly enough, it has chrome hardware. How's our headstock on this one? Thankfully not broken. But once again, we do have some stand rash right there. But thankfully, no sank strap buttons on this. So, you know, it's kind of interesting. I never realized in this set that there are two standards that have gold hardware and two that have chrome. You know, there's a two and two set there, and then you got the set of two customs. That's something that's always bugged me about this series is that there are four standards and only two customs. It would have been cool to have four and four. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. With the case candy of this one, this must have displayed in his store. It says, please don't play. Thank you. <laughs> well, I'm sure this will get a little bit of play time, but everything else is looking the same. Because apparently he kept more than one set of these. He at least had two, maybe three, if I remember the story correctly. But hey, there's our original truss rod tool in there. But the lacquer's nice and clean on these. 
All right, now we get into the customs. Let's find out if it's going to be trans white or trans red. That other one was called Mocha, by the way. I forgot to tell you that. But inside here, oh, please tell me it's not one of the customs that gets broken. Because this is my favorite one of the whole series. It's everybody's fan favorite. White. But not just any white. Translucent white. So, out of the entire series, this is the one that everybody wants, especially in clean condition. Because if you're like a Fender Telecaster fan, you know, the butterscotch blonde, this has a very similar vibe going on for it. This example, admittedly, uh, not the nicest as far as wood grain goes, but you do have some going on, and yep, darn, it's got finished checking by the knobs because it got dropped during shipping. Thankfully, they're not too bad, but they are there, and it really stinks that it had to have been on this one, my favorite of the series. But look at that gold hardware. That is magnificent and new. There's not many players on this one. And the back is not opaque. It is a complete finish. But yeah, we've got finish checking here. That's pretty normal on these, though. I don't think that's caused by any trauma. Then up here, yeah, we've got a lot by the tuners. And kind of one in the typical break area, but that's not a typical line that you would see for it to be broken. So kind of disappointed. Oh, a giant ding in the headstock. This is why it's hard to buy complete sets of guitars, because generally they don't want to take the time to like disclose every single little issue on them. But that one has another one of those please don't play things. And we've also got some finish checking on the headstock, but... Overall, still a very nice display one in one of the more desirable colors. So that leaves us with trans red that I need to go find real quick. It's either that or he forgot to send it. And here we go. It was just sitting out there. Let's go ahead and get this bad boy out. That's a first. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen anybody use egg cartons as packing materials before, but hey, whatever works. As long as they're clean, I guess. So now the sixth and final one of the Limited Colors Edition is a translucent red. I don't believe I've ever owned this one. I've had a bunch of the trans whites because I thought they were the coolest, but this one I always thought was kind of lame in comparison, but let's see just how it is in person. I will say, it looks better in person, but you also have to remember, you've got things like wine red, which is already a translucent finish. So it's basically just any type of cherry Les Paul custom. You don't necessarily have to seek out one of these from 1990. That's a limited edition collector's one to get a guitar that looks very similar to this. That's why that trans white one is definitely the coolest of the entire series. And you know, that Barney pink one's really starting to grow on me. So it looks like this one, it can just use cleaned up a little bit. It's got some something back here. And yep, this one's got the stand rash too. And a large chip off of the headstock. Man, you'd really think someone would disclose that when selling a collection of guitars, right? But whatever. I'm just elated, absolutely elated. None of these got broken in a way that is super detrimental to the value. So I think the only thing left to do for these guys is line them up on the couch, get some nice beauty shots. Let's enjoy this rare sight of a complete, very good condition collection of the original 1990 Gibson Limited Color set.
All right, troglodytes, thank you for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.